back and I'm bald. It's been a very long semester, but now I'm back at home and I can go back on the YouTube grind. Okay, so a long time ago, there was this piano run that I was obsessing over. It was just like two measures and I literally spent like three hours straight on it. Like, no exaggeration at all. And at the end of those three hours, man, my forearms were hurting, but I had that run pretty fast. It wasn't very consistent, but it was much faster than when I first started on it. And then the next day I came back to it and it felt like I only retained like 5% of that. And as I was doing it again, I was like, man, I really have to go through this three hours on this one run again and i was very discouraged i was like man am i just a big idiot what what's wrong with my body and really that was a big lesson that more repetition doesn't necessarily mean better but of course i'm not a hundred percent sure you know why would 300 reps not be better than you know two or three reps so this video is just gonna be an experimental video. I don't actually know the answer to this. Now this is gonna be completely not scientific, so maybe don't take the results too literally because there's a lot of holes in this experiment already, I can just tell. So what I'm gonna be conducting the experiment on is A Line in 12 Keys by Charlie Parker. <laughs> I've never played this line through 12 keys. I only played it in the original key. So what I'm going to do is learn it in all 12, but for every four, I'm going to use a different method of repetition. For the first four, which I guess the first three after the first one, since I already know the first one, for every key I'm working on, I'm going to repeat it till it's just comfortable. Now the reason why I'm doing this is to see, is over practicing unnecessary? Once it's comfortable, do you really have to keep going? Now in the next four, I'll be repeating each one individually 20 to 30 times after it already feels very comfortable. So I'm gonna learn it first, and then we're gonna repeat it 20 times after I feel good about it. So why am I doing this? Because I wanna know if, you know, just like in the gym, when we train, not just so there's a burn, we train so we feel the burn and keep training after the burn. At least that's what bodybuilders do. So can this concept be applied mentally through our practice? Will it be effective? I don't know, we'll find out. And then finally for the last four, this is like a theory that I've had and I wanna test it out and compare it to these other two. I'm gonna be cycling through each one, one at a time, and I'm only gonna do one rep each. This way, after I do the other three and I return back, then my mind's gonna be like an empty void and I'm gonna feel like I need to learn it again. And I'm gonna keep going through this process till I can just get it on the first try in each one, even though the first try is the only try. Because a lot of what we want, right, is to just be able to place something on the first try and not even worry about, you know, oh, I need, a, I need to do it again. So this way, I feel like, is how to practice that, you know, letting that space go by but you're also quadrupling your practice session by cycling through four of these and you're putting space between all four at the same time rather than playing one and then taking a 10 minute break coming back playing it again taking a 10 minute break and not necessarily 10 minutes but just enough time to where it's totally out of your short-term memory and the next time you do it you have to pretty much start all over so my hypothesis is that the third one is going to be the one that reigns supreme over the other two but i'm still curious what the other two are going to bring maybe i'll be wrong We'll see. All right, so let me get my saxophone out. I'm gonna warm up a bit. All right, so here's the line that I'll be performing it on. And I'll go ahead and extract just that part. First thing I have to do is actually analyze this line. Now I could write it out, but you get to a point where writing it out actually just takes longer than to just do it in your head. So let's go ahead and just walk through this. We're gonna play this slowly and understand what's going on. Okay, so so far what's going on is I start in the six and I'm doing this rhythm. Dabu, dabu, and then I go down to the third and I do that same rhythm. That same rhythm. Dabu, dabu. It's a little different. On the first one, when I go dabu, da, actually goes to a note higher than what I started on. And then when I go to the minor third, dabu, da, that note is actually lower than the note that I started on on that minor third. But it's all diatonic, so I just need to use those as an anchor point. So it's this inverted thing going on, even though it's the same melodic rhythm. Dabu, 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 dabu. Now over the D7, including the note that we modified, if there's a way I can not think about just all the numbers, I will do that.
Okay, so now I figured out how I'm going to go about transposing this theoretically through the 12 keys without writing it down because writing it down because I'm I'm lazy. Okay, so I'm going to repeat each one till it just feels good. That's this first set, and I'm not going to do any extra work on it. I would just want to see in the naked form which of these methods is superior, just on the short term, just in one day. So here I go. First one first. Okay, feels good. Now let me do the next one and slowly kind of walk through it and then just keep trying it over and over until I can just play it. Now I'm going to show the full process for this first one and then I'm just going to speed it up. If, so if the last chord was an A minor 7, then this chord is a B minor 7, which is the 2 chord of an A flat major 7. So let's go to the 6 of a B flat minor 7. go down to the flat three and then I'm gonna go to the root of the five chord which is an E flat go down to the flat seven now I'm on a D flat so I'm gonna go down the D flat minor triad now I'm gonna play that six All I can think of as the major seven of this D flat minor seven chord and now I'm going to go down to the third of this chord and pretend this is the leading tone. Not really pretend, but assume this is the leading tone of that pattern. Do -da -do -da. Okay, so I figured it out. Now I'm going to just keep playing this over and over until it just feels comfortable. Okay, so that feels pretty comfortable. Awesome. Okay, so let's go up a half step. So I'm going to turn off this camera and um, do the rest of them and then let you know how I'm doing. Okay, I'm back. So I just finished the other keys, the other two keys. And those two keys together took about four minutes and ten seconds. And the first one took about three minutes. So all together, those three keys took about seven minutes and ten seconds. And we can't really include the first one since I already knew that one. So a brand new lick that's brand new to me, like this, would probably take me around 30 minutes. But it's 30 minutes well spent, better than doing, you know, this. Okay, so I ended off in B flat major. So now I'm going to do that second method, which I forgot which it is. Let me um, read what I wrote. Good thing I wrote this down. Repeating each one till I mess up. Is mental failure a concept just like physical failure in the gym? All right, so let's go ahead and try that. I'll walk through the first one and show you exactly what I'll be doing for the next three. And I'll go ahead and time the rest of it. Okay, so now we're in the key of C sharp minor seven, which is the two chord of B major seven. So the six of C sharp minor seven is A sharp. I'm gonna go down to the fifth and then go up to the flat seven and then resume back to the fifth. Now I'm going to go down to the minor third. Now from this point I'm going to go down the minor triad. And then play the major seven of this minor triad, which is a D sharp, which is the sixth of this chord. Just make sure I have it all. Okay, it feels good. Okay, so now I know what I'm going to do. So I'm going to work it up to a point to where it's comfortable. Okay, so now it's feeling pretty comfortable. Now I'm going to turn on this metronome to a tempo where I know I could do it really easily. 
So on two and four, it's about 57 according to the tap. So now I'm just going to do that over and over. All right, and we're back. So that took about 19 minutes and 20 seconds for those last three keys of that set there. And it was a lot more torturous, so I'm not gonna lie, towards the end there, I had to do the last few reps off my horn so I wouldn't blow my throat before this video ends. So that was a lot more tedious, and it was a lot more boring. And it definitely let my mind wander off a bit, but you know, I got the reps in. Maybe that's what it takes. Maybe you have to get to that point to where you just don't think about it anymore and you're just doing reps and you're just thinking about other stuff and you're still doing reps. Maybe that's the best. We'll figure it out. At the end, but remember, we'll just figure out the short-term effects. We're not going to figure out the long-term effects because, you know, there's a million factors that go into this, and this is not a very scientific experiment here. Okay, so now the last method. Cycling through each one at a time, one rep each, till I don't mess any of them up anymore. Okay, so I'm really interested in this one. I wonder if this will work or not. This one seems like it's going to take the longest because I'm working on all four keys at once, and I'm only doing the first rep, so I can't allow myself... To, you know, borrow from the last rep I just did. I'm not going to have any reference. It's going to be clear brain each time. So, let's go ahead. <coughs> okay, so let's go ahead and see how this is. Okay, E flat. The first chord is F minor 7. So I'm going to go to the 6, which is D. Now, I'm going to do that whole process, and I'm just going to do it over and over, and I'm going to put on my timer, turn off the camera so my battery doesn't die for the 15,000th time, and then I will come back and record when everything's starting to feel comfortable so you can see what's going on. So let me start the timer. The timer starts now. The camera turns off now. Bye. All right, I am back, and it has been 17 minutes and 15 seconds. So I think I got it. This is what that amount of time has got me. So here's E flat major and going up till I stop at F sharp. So, oh, let me get in front of the mic. So that took less time than method number two, but it felt like eternity. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to eat my Taco Bell that's upstairs in the kitchen. And after I eat that Taco Bell, I am going to try all these out. And I want to see which one feels the best. I'm going to play all 12 keys. And I'm going to see which set feels the best. And then we can make an assessment what on the short term is superior out of all these methods. Now remember, there's a million other methods and this will be a really fun series to do. But for this episode, we'll see what the champion is. So let me go ahead and eat my Taco Bell. See you in a second. Hello. All right, so it has been a little over an hour. I ate the Taco Bell and I just started procrastinating. You know, what I do best. So I'm gonna go ahead and warm up. Alright, so I'm just going to start off with the first one, and we're just going to walk through each one and commentate how each section feels, alright? And I'm just going to try to play it at normal speed, and if I feel myself hiccup in thought, I'm just going to slow it down and wait till that next note comes. Alright, let's see how it goes. First set! First key doesn't really count. Amazing! Okay, now the next one. I right, start on a G. Okay, so that, that came. Okay. Um, next one, I uh, start on a G sharp, and this is in the key of A. Okay. 
Okay, that was the first try. It wasn't bad. I felt myself really having to think. Next one is in the key of B flat. Six is the A. So it's not totally, you know, um, comfortable, but you know, that's just part of it. This is only day one, so you can't give it. You can't really expect that much. Okay, so that was the first try on each one of those. I promise I'm not lying to you because I really want to know what the results of this would be. Okay, so that was pretty decent, you know. I That was really fine for a first day, you know. And considering that was the fastest one by a long shot, that was only uh, 10 minutes approximately for all four of those. So, okay, so let's go ahead and work on the next set. This set was the one where... We did 30 reps each after it was already comfortable. So I'm curious how this will feel. So the first one we did was the C sharp. Wow. That did not perform any better than the ones before that. I'm honestly not surprised because, you know, when your mind is kind of brain dead and you're just doing reps, just do reps, I feel like it should work, but it doesn't. But that is a hard key. Maybe it's unfair. So let me just keep going. The next key starts on a D minor seven. So this is in a key of C. So I'm going to go to the sixth of D minor seven, B, and we're going to start it. carried away okay that was pretty easy but that is in the key of C it is a really easy key in general so it's hard to make a real comparison which is why this isn't very scientific it's hard to conduct these experiments let's keep going so the next one starts on an E flat minor 7 meaning this is in the key of D flat so the sixth of E flat is C so we're going to start on there Wow, this is this is pretty interesting. I'm not surprised, but I'm sure many of you watching this might be surprised. You know, more reps a day doesn't necessarily mean better or more progress. Okay, and then the last one going up is going to be starting on the E minor 7, which is in the key of D. So let's go ahead and try this one. Okay, so that was pretty easy. And to be fair, I remember when practicing this, this one did feel like the easiest key of all of them. So like I said, it's hard to conduct the results. But as you can see from the first four, really, there is really no difference. And even for me, I didn't really feel like I felt any difference. So far from that assessment, it feels like doing reps after it feels comfortable is kind of obsolete. So there you have it. And remember, this is just short term. Who knows, maybe those 30 reps, extra reps, would be more beneficial in the long run. I don't think it is. I, I think I've tried it, and it, it didn't really prove to be more beneficial. Okay, so now let's go ahead and try the last four. So we're going to start on the F minor 7. When I felt the kind of sense of unfamiliarity right off the bat, immediately my brain kicked in on how to work this out really fast because it was used to kind of sight playing, if that's a term, uh, this, you know, playing it after it hasn't played it for a while or at least till the brain reset and kicked all this information out of my short term memory. And then I had to start from scratch again. That felt really comfortable. Let's go ahead and try the next one. So that was uh, in the key of E flat. So now we're gonna go to the key of E in the first chord is F sharp minor seven. And now we're going to play D sharp, that's the sixth. And let's see what happens. Wow, 
this is coming right out. Okay, I'm not surprised, but it's just really cool to actually kind of confirm for myself that this method really is kind of the superior method. And these are some harder keys, by the way. This was E flat and then E major. All right, now we're going to try F major. So G minor 7, the 6 is E. This is really cool. This is actually way better. Okay, this method is superior. I, I think I'm sold. Remember, this is only short term. All right, and now the last one. The hardest key of all because we have some funky fingerings going here. So we're in a key of F sharp. This is a G sharp minor chord, and the first note is an E sharp. Wow. So that was by far the most fluent. Here, let me turn on this microphone. Okay, so that was a really interesting result. The first experiment took the least amount of time and only took 10 minutes altogether. And it was able to yield the same results as the one that took almost twice the amount of time, the second method. And then the third result, I think, reigned supreme over the others, just as I kind of assumed it would. I felt the most secure on that. That initial feeling just from playing the first note, a feeling like kind of lost, like, uh oh, do I remember this? Uh, let me recall the information. I feel like I had exercised that recall aspect to this memory of a line in 12 keys. And I felt like the recall was much more sharper than the previous eight keys that I had practiced in. Now remember, this is just a short-term experiment, and there's a million other ways we could go about practicing this. So I'd love to make this a series. If there is a different practice method that you feel like works even better, put it in the comments. Maybe I'll try that in the next episode. All right, well, thank you for 84.7 thousand subscribers. Oh my god! That is a lot of subscribers. Now, if you'd like to buy that Charlie Parker poster that I announced from a previous video on a giveaway, the link is in my description below. I will take care and have a great day.